This video begins the new series on how to write a pop EDM track from scratch. And today, we start with the synth chords. True Sound Studios is in your ears. Okay guys, so here we go. This is a totally fresh project, meaning I just clicked File New, created a brand new, just normal project. And some of the first things I like to do with a very fresh project like this is there's some things that I like to change. So first I'm gonna go to Options, uh, Crossfade, and in the Fast one, it says Fast In, I like to do the Fast Curve. And then the Crossfade, the Fast Out, I like to do the Slow. And that'll kind of like ramp in audio and then ramp it out. Um, always have the cross, uh, the auto crossfade on. Another thing I like to do is go to options and then metering options. I like to have them horizontally, meaning the LEDs that essentially light up to show us our signal will go this way opposed to like this. I just feel like it's a little easier. You don't have to zoom into the track so much. Um, another thing, um, come over here to the snap. I don't like the smart snap on uh, just because it kind of like changes and I just, you know, I've just been used to, you know, doing what I wanted to do. So I just turned that off and I generally have this on like 16th notes, but that doesn't really matter. I'm going to change that actually quite a bit. So one of the first things we have to do is we have to decide what tempo do we want our song to be at. So right up here, this is the BPM or the tempo of the track. And because it's going to be like somewhat of a pop EDM track, we're going to kind of go a little bit more traditional. We'll go up to 128, which is kind of like your typical pop EDM dance uh, tempo. This is something good, just, you know, something easy to start with. Uh, 128, you'll find a whole mess ton of songs out there that are going to start at 128. So now the first thing we have to do is we have to create some sort of chord. So the chords is the way that I do it first. Now, this does not mean it's the right way. This does not mean that's the only way, but this is the way that I do it. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. Obviously you can do things on your own, but I like to start with the chords. So we're gonna use um, one of the included synths. So we're gonna go to VST2 and we're gonna use the Rapture. So we, um, over on these options, you can do a simple instrument track, which kind of combines these two together. Now, I personally like to split them up. For my brain, it just kind of seems easier. So we're gonna just leave it checked, uh, MIDI source, and then the first synth audio output. And then mi enable MIDI output. This is all fine, we just wanna click OK. So now it has created a audio track and then the MIDI MIDI track. So essentially what's going to happen is we're going to write MIDI on track two and then it's going to send that audio to track one where that's where we can put our audio plugins on. Okay, so now let's come over here um, and we're going to double click on our synth and some of the things that I like to use typically in this is some of the leads and some of the pad sounds. I think they really sound very modern. So I'm going to go to the pad section. And then um, I really like some of these fine mixture ones. So let's uh, let's play around with this. I'm gonna click on the first one. Now, almost every synth, almost ever, uh, I'm not gonna say every synth, but a, a good majority of them are all gonna be like super, super loud. They're gonna be pushing zero. So first thing I like to do is really turn these down quite a bit. Um, so like somewhere around 50% 50 50 should be good. So now that I got that down, I'm gonna play around with some chords. Let's see what this sounds like. So it's not bad, uh, not, not what I want. So let's try the number two. That's cool, but it's a little, little abrasive, a little, uh, little bit too much high end. Okay, right here. Okay, so I like those. So we're gonna use, um, for this project, we're gonna use Fine Mixtures 3. Um, so now, if you don't wanna mess around with this sound too much, um, we can really just leave it alone. I think that's what we'll do first, is just leave alone these default settings on this particular um, preset. So I'm gonna close this, and I'm going to zoom into our track view here so that I can show you some of these things. So, okay, so I have my mini lab set up off screen over here. And that is how I'm triggering all these mini notes. Now you can actually use your like keyboard that you type on 
is that um, I've never used that before, so I can't show you how to use that. Um, but so what is going to happen is you always want to leave this uh, input echo on because otherwise you're not actually going to be able to hear what the synth, the synth sound is making. And then you will arm it by right here. And essentially what I told you earlier, we're actually going to write MIDI on here, which means we're going to play the notes on here. And then this is actually going to get processed and it's going to come and play out through here. So for the MIDI input, we are going to click on our mini lab and I just generally do it on the Omni and then the output is going to go to Rapture. So essentially we're going to play notes. It's going to go to the Rapture. The Rapture is going to process those MIDI notes and then it's going to send it. We need to send it to an audio track. So then here the input needs to be the Rapture. And then finally we have the at the output, essentially where it's going to go in the DAW, which would be to our master output. I have a whole bunch of mass, uh, inputs and outputs, but it's going to go to the master output. So that's how the routing works with this. Okay, so now really the next thing to do is to very simply just turn on our metronome and start playing around with the chords and try to make it fit into this 128 tempo. Okay, so um, I don't don't know what I love about this yet, but uh, let me try this one more time. So I think that was pretty good. I think that is, you know, is is a good start. So these are chords. So obviously I am using um, a, a bunch of different notes together. So I, I particularly like to do chords with three, three notes. Okay, so we got F, A, C, E, A, C, D, G, B, and then D, G, C. And that makes up our essentially our four chords. So now we'll come over here and what we're gonna do is I double clicked that actually, sorry, it came up on my second screen over here. Now we can use some of these tools up here to kind of help us out with editing this a little bit further. So I'm gonna zoom in, whoops, a little too much. So I didn't like the first section of this. So let's take a listen and let's cut, let's delete this. So we can use the erase tool up here. So that's right where it's gonna end. So I'm just gonna very simply highlight this all and it's gonna go and it's gonna be deleted. So let's zoom back over to here and now I'm gonna use the smart tool, which I what I like to do and actually right click. And so you can see I played this just a little bit ahead of the beat. So what I'm gonna actually do is just pull this back a little bit just to kind of line it up a little easier. And then I'm gonna come up here to process, quantize, and for this particular thing, probably 16th notes will work out pretty well. Um, also, I kind of use eighth notes a lot also. That seems to work fine, but you'll notice sometimes it's gonna move your notes around too far. So 16th is a good way to start. We can do 100%. Maybe if this was gonna be piano, you could turn this down to like 90 to give it a little bit more realism if you don't want it to sound like super you know, robotic-like. So we're just gonna hit okay. And as you can see, it just moved all the notes just a smidgen. So now let's take a listen. So there you go. That sounds, I mean, that sounds pretty good. Um, one thing I did notice is some of these notes get a little loud, um, particularly over here. And what you can actually do is you can see these, these, this is the velocity, essentially how hard I hit these notes. And the darker they get, the the harder you hit them. So you see, that was the loudest one. I'm gonna turn that down. You can very simply just using the draw tool or the smart tool, you can just essentially just redraw how loud you want this. So I'm just gonna turn it down just a little bit. 
and to slide it back over to where it was supposed to be. And then we'll zoom out again and just take a listen one more time. So it's pretty good. Um, you know, we can obviously edit this even further. And some of the fun things you can do is, um, for example, we have our 16th notes up top here. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide these until they snap because they're they're actually going to snap to the grid as you can see how they're kind of like jumping to these sections here so we'll try moving these around a little bit just kind of clean this performance up now you don't have to do this this is kind of like getting really into some of the production but i do feel like it does help in the end so that was our first chord um second chord as you can see i held that one down kind of long and all we're doing is just, we're just gonna clean up all these notes just to make it sound a little bit more, you know, modern. You know, we, we want that modern sound. We're going for like a an EDM pop thing. So, you know, it should be modern. Now, obviously, if you're not sure where to snap these to, you know, play around. I mean, this is recording. Essentially, you can do anything you want. Um, it is always up to you. You are creating art. So art should be whatever you want. Whoops. Um, art should be whatever you want. So do what you want. If you don't like the way that this sounds, you know, you can always edit it. It's what's amazing about MIDI is it's essentially forever editable. Editable. Is that a word? <laughs> okay, now take a listen. Much better. So I really like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually close this window out. And now you can see here, because I had recorded a whole big section of this, actually let me take off the record so it's not red anymore. And I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna right click on here, and now I'm gonna do bounce to clips. And you can see it got rid of all that extraness at the end. So now I'm gonna come back up to the snap, and actually this time we're gonna to go to whole notes. So I always like to give eight clicks or eight um, beats before a project starts this way just in case I have some things I want to do before the track starts or whatever um, so I'm gonna take this I'm actually just gonna slide it over and you can see once again it's just snapping now another thing I can do is highlight this and we can go edit edit copy <laughs> sorry I couldn't see that and then we can right click edit paste and now we just duplicated that and then we can do the same thing and just keep going with this and you know just have a bunch of these and this is all going to snap perfectly to the grid so if we take a listen now i'm going to turn the metronome back on and you'll hear that now it's perfectly in time So for the most part, that is how we create the chords part of our track, of our EDM track. So we will get further into how to cut this up when we get into structuring this song. But this is the basic, this is how you can start building your track by creating and recording your own chords inside Cakewalk Sonar. Now, particularly I'm using Cakewalk Sonar Platinum, but for the most part, this should be all, all the same. Now, you might not actually have this synth particularly um, included in your DAW, whichever one you chose to purchase, but you can also buy the Rapture right from Cakewalk. And, and you know, once again, you don't have to just use this synth. You don't have to use this. You could use piano, strings, whatever you want. I'm just showing you guys the basics. So in the next video, we are going to start building the drums on this song. And then later on, we will add bass and the lead, and then we will structure the song. And then we're actually going to get into the songwriting where we write the lyrics. And this is going to be a whole series on how to create a song from scratch. So if you guys like this video, consider subscribing and hit that like button. Follow us on Instagram for daily posts. You can find the beats that I make right here at the studio on our SoundCloud page. True Sound Studios also mixes and masters your tracks. So once again, guys, thanks for watching this video. I'm Wiesna. We're at True Sound Studios, and True Sound Studios is in your ears. <laughs>